Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. A TV producer working on a hit show near a deserted mine vanishes. Never to be seen again. Days before he disappeared, Terrence Woods texted his family. He said he was leaving his trip to Idaho early. His parents say it just doesn't add up. It's just unbelievable. Terrence Sr. says he hired a private investigator who discovered things that no one had told him before. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Today is very important because we are going to try and help unravel a mystery. A TV producer working on a hit show suddenly vanishes into thin air. Now, it was just about two years ago, 2018, Terrence Woods Jr. was hired as part of a crew who would head into the remote mountains of Idaho to explore abandoned gold mines for Discovery Channel's Gold Rush Dave Turin's lost mine. Now, according to Terrence's father, when he spoke to his son, soon after he arrived, everything was going fine. But then just four days into the job, he sent his father a baffling text. He would be leaving weeks before schedule and heading home. Then later that night, at a shoot in the middle of nowhere, he dropped his radio, according to witnesses, and sprinted down a cliff into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Take a look. There's an intense search happening in Idaho tonight for a man from Maryland who disappeared there last week. His name is Terrence Woods. Terrence Woods was reported missing around 5.30 the evening of October 5th. Terrence Woods was a promising student here at the University of Maryland's Philip Merrill College of Journalism. A 2013 graduate, Woods was in his element when he disappeared last Friday. The Idaho County Sheriff says Woods was filming a documentary in the Oro Ground area with London production company Raw TV and was separated from his film crew when he went missing. Woods was working on a film shoot near Penman Mine. The rugged area is about 250 miles north of Boise. Friends forwarded this post from Woods' private Instagram account the day he disappeared. Idaho County Sheriff say Woods was acting strange, left the rest of his crew, and went over a steep drop. He would not stop, he would not return, and he just kept going, and they lost him at the... There's a road down below where he dropped almost straight down. Multiple agencies have been scouring Idaho County, Idaho's largest and most rugged county. Only days before he disappeared, Terrence Woods texted his family. He said he was leaving his trip to Idaho early. He has never once, never once cut any of his trips short. One member of the crew told police that he saw Woods drop his two-way radio and run down a steep hill. His parents have a theory. He's scared. Someone was bullying him. I, th I think he was fearful. There was something going wrong, and he felt he couldn't deal with it, and he wanted to leave. Well, Terrence's friends and family claim he has no history of mental illness, and this doesn't sound like him at all. In fact, they say they believe something much more sinister happened. Now, Terrence's parents have spent two years searching for answers. I dropped my son off at Reagan National Airport on September 30th, which was a Sunday. He say, see you later, Dad. I said, nope, see you sooner. And we hugged, and he walked into the terminal. That was the last time I saw my son. I spoke with him on the 1st of October. He texted me and said he arrived in Idaho on the 5th. That's when I received the next text that he was coming home. After that, the next call I did as he disappeared. The day that he went missing is when my world kind of crashed. I never imagined that they were going to tell me that my son was missing. The nightmare 
begin from there. I couldn't believe it. I sat on my bed and I kept saying, what do you mean? What do you mean? When it was telling me the story that my son ran off in the woods. We flew out to Idaho. When we met the first day, no one from the crew was there other than the sheriff department and a detective. So I thought that was very odd. It took a long time to just get the general information on what happened to him. The team lead person stated that he was at his Jeep and they were wrapping up for the day and that Terrence said that he had to relieve himself. So he walked over to the cliff. He said that he looked up and Terrence had a funny look on his face. He said he immediately jumped out of the vehicle and ran over there because he felt my son fell off the cliff. Once he got over there, he said my son was 10 feet already down the cliff, running like a hare. I asked him, I said, what do you mean running like a hare? He said, I never seen anyone run that fast. I definitely felt like they wasn't forthcoming with a lot of um, information. It's been almost two years and it, the pain is undescribable. Right now we have no healing, we have no answers. Well, Terrence Woods Sr. and Valerie Butler join us today via Ionico from their homes in Maryland. So thank you both for joining us. Now, first off, has he ever gone missing before? No. No, I've never experienced anything like that with him. Um, he, he always had direction. He always, you know, he, he knows what he wants. And, you know, he completed all of his assignments to the end. It's never been any indication whatsoever that he had any type of anxiety attack or anything. And Terrence, you dropped him at the airport, correct? Correct. Did he have any trepidation about this assignment? He felt a little uncomfortable about it. For some reason, he told, he told myself and he told his younger brother and his cousin. He said it was something about it that he really didn't want to go, but he committed himself to the company. So he said, Dan, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. Now, on October 4th, he sent you a text and he said, hey, Dad, just got to the hotel in Idaho. And then on the 5th, the very next day, he said, I'll be coming home on the 10th now, Dad, to which you responded, that's excellent. Make sure you bring me a shot glass from everywhere. Be safe. I love you, and I'm very proud of you. And you had expected him to be there for how long? He was supposed to be there for another two weeks. For another two weeks, but he said he's now going to be coming home in just five days. Did that not trigger any curiosity on your part as to why? I was just happy that he was coming home early. I just wanted him to come home like I want him to come home now. You bet. Well, coming up, Terrence Sr. says he hired a private investigator who discovered things that no one had told him before. We're going to find out what he learned after the break. We'll be right back. like they are keeping something. I recently had another private investigator. He brought up some facts to me that no one mentioned before. It's been close to a week now, and authorities are still searching. And Terrence and Valerie aren't giving up hope that their son will be found. Can't get lost out there because if you're running out there, you're going to run a road, their houses, run a road, their houses. So for him just to poof, vanish and disappear, no, he, he made it to that road. Someone picked him up. He's not the type of person that would just run off or do anything like that, so it seems unusual to me. We're talking about a mysterious disappearance for Terrence Woods Jr., who vanished while working as a production assistant on the popular show Gold Rush. Dave Turin's lost mine. Now, witnesses say Terrence was working on a shoot at an abandoned mine when he suddenly sprinted down a cliff into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Now, his parents, Terrence Wood Sr. and Valerie Butler, say the story about what happened to their son, well, they say it just doesn't add up. I'm, like, clueless as to what could have happened 
on that mountain. Terrence has been on several assignments and came home without a scratch. And for him to not come home at all and to not have any answers, it's, 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 it's painful. The story seems very bizarre. It's just unbelievable. I know my son didn't just run off into the wilderness at night in the dark. Terrence is not athletic at all. I've never seen him climb a tree. I mean, I don't even think I've seen him climb a ladder. So for them to say, oh, he, you know, just jumped down this side of a mountain and took off running and no one can catch him and no one can find him, I can't believe that. But I honestly do not have a clue. I recently had another private investigator. He brought up some facts to me that no one mentioned before. There was a professional basketball player he had two of his sons that was out there as well the day of the shoot. One of the sons supposed to be getting some type of counseling now because of whatever took place. That was never even mentioned to me. I want the truth. I would like justice. Well, Terrence, Valerie, there were 12 people on this shoot, correct? Yes, that's what we heard. That's what was told to us. Okay, and have you talked to the other 11 people that were there? We haven't spoken to anyone except for the production um, leader, uh, producer, um, Simon G, and um, two executives from World TV. What was their explanation? Uh, that he ran off. Now, they say he just ran off down a cliff. Is that correct? Correct. They said um, the gentleman, Simon, Simon G, said that once... He looked out of the window of the vehicle he was in. He noticed the radio. By the time he got over there, with no seconds, my son was already 10 feet down the cliff. Then they started running after my son, but they couldn't catch him. Now, mind you, he doesn't trip, he doesn't fall. I, I told him more than once, Michael Jordan couldn't have made it down the cliff. My son is a flat-footed person. We spent $300 to buy him inserts for his shoes because he's flat-foot. My son would trip walking up the steps. Yeah. They said when all of them came back up the cliff, their clothes was ripped, some of them were bleeding. Well, they had dogs. You didn't even find a trace of my son's blood, nor any ripped clothes. I mean, let's, come on. When I first spoke with um, Simon G, uh, he expressed to me how disappointed he was with him, um, how um, he came highly recommended and that they didn't interview anyone else because he was so highly recommended. But when he arrived at the site, they were extremely disappointed. Um, he didn't know uh, the lens of the camera that he was asking for. Or he, you know, they tried, they wanted him to get lunch and he couldn't get the lunch. Or it, it was, he, he just went on and on about unnecessary things when I asked him what happened. Why would he talk about performance issues when he's missing? That's a question that we, we asked as well, but that's what he dwelled on. He didn't dwell on the fact that our son was missing. Raw insists that any conversations with Terrence's family about his normal behavior, as well as his behavior and state of mind in the days prior to his disappearance, took place solely so that the search and rescue team could gather critical information that might help in the search in accordance with recommended search and rescue protocol. So if all of these clothes were neatly folded, not worn as of yet, while he was on his trip, where are his dirty clothes? Most recently, Sheriff Giddings called off the search for Terrence Woods, a decision that's hard to swallow for loved ones. It's one thing when you get a phone call, your son had an accident. You know, you have to deal with that. But at least your son going home with you. It's another thing, your child's quote unquote missing. It's always tough for the family. They would like us to keep searching forever. Well, 26 year old Terrence Woods Jr. vanished in the Idaho mountains in 2018. Now, his family says when he vanished, he had been working on the production for four days. But when his father opened his suitcase, he discovered something really surprising. After finally unpacking my son's stuff, to my surprise, the majority of his clothes 
if not all, neatly folded up. This is the way I took him out of his bag, other than laying his pants straight. As you can see, pants were not worn. The shirt or the coat, plenty of underwear. But you do not see a bag of any dirty clothes. So if all of these clothes were neatly folded, not worn as of yet, while he was on his trip, where are his dirty clothes? Well, Terrence, what do you conclude from that? That was the first time that you looked in your son's suitcase. What was it like emotionally when you opened that up and saw that um, it was really undisturbed? Once I start taking clothes out, taking pants out, then I unfolded a shirt, unfolded his pants, no knee marks, pants not worn. Okay, this is four pair of pants. Look at his socks, socks still rolled up. No socks. Where's his dirty clothes? Underwear. No dirty underwear. And so that right there was like, wow. So you're telling me he was there for four days and kept on the same pair of socks, same shirt, same underwear. But they also had a pair of shoes in his luggage inside of a plastic bag, which had mud all over them, mud everywhere. So just to say the shoes are muddy, at least there should be a pair of pants where the bottom of the pants should have some type of mud or something on them. That's not even in a bag. Well, Valerie, what do you what do you make of this? I think it's odd. Um, you know, um, Terrence is a very um, he's very neat. Um, he's particular about his 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 clothing, and his hygiene, and and everything. Um, and for there not to be anything is is very odd. It's strange. What did your son take with him? when he ran into the woods, did they say he had anything with him? No, they, they said, matter of fact, they said he put down his radio and everything. He dropped his radio it's, and just took off. Exactly. Running. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to try to unravel exactly what happened that night. Is the case still open? Well, you have to define what do you mean by open. I mean, he's not been located, so yes, it's open, but we don't have people up on the mountain right. actively searching for him. Is there any part of the file that the parents can't have a copy of or can't see so they can do their own investigation? When you walk in a garage, first thing you see is pictures of my sons. If you look over here, you have a picture of him when he ran to be the president in elementary school. And yes, he did win. I have pictures of him in the China class closet. That's a collection of shot glasses. The last thing I told him is make sure you bring me a shot glass. Once going upstairs, if you go to your left, it's his room. Everything is the same. The picture up there, that's the picture that's on my arm. But this is my room. That's the chair right there that he will fall asleep in when me and him would watch movies together. I would wake up in the middle of the night and he would be asleep right there. And then I have right here pictures of him. So I go to sleep and wake up thinking about him. The family of production assistant Terrence Woods Jr. has been desperately seeking answers since he disappeared without a trace two years ago. They say they are not getting the whole story from the UK-based production company, Raw TV. However, Raw maintains this was a tragic accident and they did everything they could to find Terrence. Now, I'm back with Terrence's parents, uh, Terrence Sr. and Valerie, along with UK-based freelance reporter, Rochelle Newman. And she knew Terrence. She says there is no way the Terrence she knew would willingly run off a cliff. Terence and I met when we were both starting out in the TV industry. Terence was just one of those people that you wanted to be friends with. He loved filmmaking and he loved traveling. I don't have any hair. 
I do, because I was thinking I need a haircut earlier today. I'm a trained criminologist and I make true crime documentaries. If Terence was there with the crew at the time, they would have found some sort of DNA or clothing, footprints, evidence of him being there. But for a crew who are trained to be in conditions like this to find absolutely nothing of him is very bizarre. It's been nearly two years since Terence's disappearance and we just feel at a loss. I have to speak out because no one else will. And I feel that Terence needs people like me to keep his story alive. That's why I've chosen to keep it going, to make sure that we can find Terence or that we get some justice. Well, joining us via Ionico is Rochelle. And Rochelle, you're talking to us from where? London. Now, after Terence went missing, did they complete the shoot? From my knowledge, uh, this episode didn't air, but from my knowledge, they continued filming as it was normal. All right, now, you guys hired a private investigator. What did you learn from the private investigator? Did that advance the ball, and what did you learn? Well, as far as the private investigators, there was two. We didn't learn much. Um, Did people ask around town, the diners, the hotel, the places around, who had they, seen Terrence when he was last seen? They said that they went into a restaurant that the whole crew was in one night. Allegedly, my son met a young lady there, and they exchanged numbers. Well, up to this day, I don't know. We don't have the name of that person. The sheriff department, when you ask them questions, they're giving no answers. You know, they said they're not going out looking for him anymore, but the case is not closed. Well, if you're not looking for him or doing anything, why can't you say the case is closed and give me the information that you have? Coming up, one of Terrence's friends joins us. She says she worked with him and there is no way he would willingly ignore his obligations and leave a job early. That's next. that none of what I've heard at all describes Terence. He wasn't someone to bottle up how he felt. So even if, you know, as all humans do, have a moment where maybe they are under pressure, he would have spoken to one of us and said, I'm not sure about this, or can you advise me? Terence, if you're watching, I want you to know that we're gonna do everything in our power to get you back home where you belong. I will go to my grave until I get you back home or find out what happened to you. Come home, call me, go to someone to try to find help. You know, we're here waiting for him. We love him, we miss him. I just want to know. I just want to know where my baby is and I just want him to back, back. This is so hard. Terrence Woods vanished in 2018 while filming a television show in a remote location in Idaho. Now, well, joining us via Ionico is Joanna Abayi. Joanna, you've worked with him before. You know him. Does any of this sound at all like Terrence? Not at all. Um, I find it really hard to believe any of any of the accounts that we've we've heard today and previously. Just, just not Terence. He's exceptionally um, professional. Not only have I uh, worked with Terence, but I was also responsible for placing him into a number of production roles, of which I used to get text messages, WhatsApp messages, emails telling me how incredible a, a contributor he was, how professional he was, the fact that he thought before... He would think about things before they even needed to be done. He was very can-do and constantly making the life of his team um, easier. So I can't... None of what I've heard at all describes Terence. He wasn't someone to bottle up how he felt. So even if, you know, as all humans do, have a moment where maybe they are under pressure, he would have spoken to one of us and said, I'm not sure about this, or can you advise me... He wasn't someone to behave in the way they've described at all. Well, that is so helpful. And here is the 911 call log. On 6.41 p.m., October 5th, 2018, 911 call log transcript from the Idaho County Sheriff's Office. Quote, advised that a male, Terrence Woods, 27, from London, 
works for a TV company who was creating a movie in the area of Penman Mine. Never been in the woods, no guns. Terrence has been having a really hard time emotionally and had a mental breakdown earlier today. Dark complexion and light clothes. Terrence is not going to respond back to responders per reporter. Terrence does not have communication. There are people searching for him now. Now, I, I will say, efforts were made. Uh, helicopters were called out and they had uh, heat-seeking technology because it was cold. They thought, okay, uh, body warmth would show up. Nothing showed up. They brought out dogs. Dogs picked up no scent whatsoever, not even where he went down the side of the cliff. Joining me now is Sheriff Doug Giddings of the Idaho County Sheriff's Office. Now, his office received the 911 call. He oversaw Terrence's case and joins us today from Grangeville, Idaho. So, Sheriff, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I know you have a million things to do. That's all right. Glad to be here. Listen, this obviously is a case that uh, the parents are really upset about because their son has just disappeared uh, off the face of the earth and they don't know what happened to him. Who reported the disappearance to the department? It was one of the production uh, participants uh, called it in. Okay. And how many witnesses were there? I think there was probably, you had Mike and Cherie and you had Simon. Actually, three right there that saw him go over. They hollered right away at him. And then several other of the production folks came and and uh, observed him running down the hill. Yeah, Were all of the witnesses spoken to? Uh, yes, by our detective or by our deputy that right. originally took the report. And how did people describe his mental state in the moments before they saw him run into the woods? Well, there was a combination of thoughts. Uh, people had different experiences with him, but Shree was talking to him, and he was just fine explaining to her about his family and his situation, and uh, there was nothing outstanding or really out of the ordinary. Uh-huh. And she's one of the ATV drivers that takes people to and from, is that right? Correct. And so she's a local there and kind of knows the terrain and all? She is. Mm -hmm. And what did she say? Well, he told the story of his relationship with his mom and his dad and why he was where he was and where he'd been in London and uh, just kind of about his life. He described some tension in the family. Right, okay. And did they describe what he was wearing when he disappeared? I'm curious, did he have on a like a winter coat and boots? Yes, I don't have the exact description in my mind. It's been a while, but right. yes, he had, a, he had boots on and I think a dark jacket. I know that's very rough terrain out there, and I know people hike and hunt and explore and all. Do, do people disappear like this? I wouldn't call it regularly, but if you live in the city then your definition might be regularly. Uh, we happened to have one missing at the very same time. And so people got confused thinking they were related. There was an older lady that uh, was working for an outfitter and she disappeared at the same time. Yeah. Was she found? Not a trace. Yeah. What happens to people? I mean, are there mine shafts that people fall down up there? What, where do, how do they just disappear? Well, in this case with Terrence, a mine shaft or the uh, air holes is a possibility. There, and, but there's lots of possibilities. He could have had a ride pick him up. Uh, he could have walked out, but you see, he had to cross roads going down the hill, right? and there are a few houses up there. So if he was looking for help, he could have stopped at any of those houses. And none of the houses reported him stopping? No, nope. we checked with the houses. Yeah. They didn't see any unusual cars go by. So we didn't come up with anything there. Let's take a break. Coming up, what you might be able to do to help. We'll be right back. Hey, 
Hey everyone, season 19 is underway. If you never made it to Hollywood to be a part of the studio audience, well, now it doesn't matter. If you're in Oklahoma, Georgia, Texas, New Jersey, or anywhere else in the world, now you can be a part of our virtual audience. All you need is a computer and an internet connection. Go to drphil.com and click on Be Part of the Audience for more information. That's right. Hope to see you soon. Behind me, I have um, a lot of refrigerated magnets, as you can see. The family traveled with him. We saw things and, and went places through his eyes. He would send back photos, and, and he would bring back the magnets for me. So I have um, the Berlin magnet, as well as the London, Scotland. I have Morocco, Amsterdam, Alaska. Paris, I mean, you know, Niagara Falls. He would say, you know, Mom, I got your magnet. I got your magnet. And, and it, it just kept growing. According to Raw, the Sheriff's Department facilitated a meeting between the production and Terrence's family, which took place at the police station and was attended by both the sheriff and the undersheriff. What is your response to the, the parents stating that they can't get the names of the people that were involved in the shoot so they can talk to them themselves. They're, they're saying that they can't get information so they can do their own investigation. I don't know whose names don't they have. Several of the names are in the report, or at least a couple of them. Um, I don't know if they've inquired from the production company, but the production company has been very cooperative trying to meet with them and share information. At least that's what I've been told by the production company. Okay. And they think that this case needs to be reinvestigated. Is there anything that you know of that can be reexamined or needs to be reinvestigated in, in your professional opinion? Well, I've kind of been asked that question and some pressure has been applied to reinvestigate, but my response has been, we've done everything that we can do from canines to helicopters, flyovers, uh, we've done grid coverage, grid coordinates covers with several people uh, searching. Uh, we've done everything that we can do, and there's really nothing more that we can do locally. We have, if his name shows up on a credit card or whatever, or on uh, his passport, he's traveling out of the states. Uh, his name is would come up, but it hasn't. Do you believe that the production company, Raw TV, had anything to hide or were they completely forthcoming with you? I believe that they were forthcoming because we had two local people that I personally know who are totally straight, honest, ethical, moral. They were there at the time. They saw what happened. The one was talking to him like approximately 30 minutes before he took off. There's absolutely zero evidence that any of these kind of conspiracy theories or different ideas of what might have happened are accurate. From the people that we took statements from, they all had their personal feelings or experiences with him. We believe that he wasn't really happy. He'd asked to leave early. He'd used an excuse that apparently wasn't accurate in order to leave early. And they, the production company was working that out, getting him a plane flight. So in your professional opinion, have you ruled out foul play in, in your thinking? Yes, we have ruled out. We haven't ruled out that something bad happened, but as far as foul play, we've found no evidence of any foul play. Mm -hmm. So in your best estimate, and I'm just, I'm trying to summarize, not put words in your mouth, so you correct me if I'm misstating this, but in your estimation, uh, this young man just went off on his own into treacherous terrain and somehow or another uh, got lost out there or came to some bad end through no one's wrongdoing, he just got in over his head in a terrain he wasn't equipped to deal with and he hasn't been found yet. That pretty much sums it up. 
Did you find it odd that the production company left a staffer behind without knowing his whereabouts? Oh, I guess to some degree, but uh, they were pretty upset about the fact that it happened and they decided to be done and they headed home. Well, this young man's been missing for two years and so you can understand the pain that his parents are going through and their frustration and consternation and trying to get some answers because it's it just it's hard for them to understand that he can be standing there one moment and disappeared off the face of the earth the next no trace no trail no clothing no nothing found on the mountain and they're having trouble getting all this to add up and that's why they're trying to keep digging they just want to know what the answers are even if it's bad news I understand. I think I understand totally. It seems impossible, but if you were here and you saw the area where they are, you can just disappear. Yeah. And at this point, is the case still open? Well, you have to define what do you mean by open. I mean, he's not been located. So, yes, it's open. But we don't have people up on the mountain, mountain right. actively searching for him. Is there any part of the file that the parents can't have a copy of or can't see so they can do their own investigation? They've got a couple of private investigators who have dealt with this. Uh, they've got his, uh, his diary, uh, his, I think his cell phone, his tablet. Uh, they, they've been given, I think, just about everything there is to give them. Sheriff Giddings, you've been more than generous with your time, and I can't thank you enough for uh, willing to go on record here and talk about this. I, I, I hope the parents can get some answers uh, eventually out of this, and I, I respect your, your efforts and, and your work on this case. Well, we're talking about Terrence Woods Jr.'s disappearance in 2018. It's been two years and not a clue. Now, Terrence, your position is either keep looking for Terrence or close the case so we can have the file and do it ourselves, correct? Absolutely. Correct. That's I mean, you correct. can't say that it's you can't say that it's open, but I'm not doing anything. But we right. need to do something because it's our son missing. So if you're not going to do it, anything about it, why aren't you closing it? Because once you mm -hmm. close it, then we, can, we, we will see everything that you have in it, if it's true or false, and we will move on. If you have any information on the disappearance of Terrence Woods Jr., which you're seeing on the screen right now, please contact the number on our screen. It's 208-983-1100. And um, you're in our minds, hearts, and prayers to find this young man. We reached out to Raw and invited them to appear. They provided us with this statement. Terrence was a popular figure at Raw. He was well-liked and a valued member of the production team, and his disappearance deeply affected us all. We have the deepest sympathy for Terrence's family and friends. It is truly heartbreaking that Terrence has not been found, and we continue to hope that he will be. Since we taped our interview with Terrence's parents, Raw TV says they have contacted the Woods family to reiterate their willingness to facilitate another meeting between themselves and both Raw and the Sheriff's Department to address any questions Terrence's parents may have. So for more information about today's show, please log on to drphil.com. I'm sure you'll be discussing this on our Facebook and Twitter platforms, so we'll be looking for more comments there. Thank all of you for being here today. I, I can't thank you, thank you enough me. for this, and we really hope that there is a, a happy ending to all of this. We'll see you next time.